Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Wong. I'm Emma Fife. Daniel Degon Gonzalez. I'm Matt Morello. And I'm Erin Ashley Simon. Your hosts on a new show called The Download. It's a daily look at the stories, people, and trends that matter to you most from gaming, pop culture, movies, and beyond. Are you going PlayStation or are you going Xbox? I'm going Nintendo. <laughs> we love what you love, so you can be sure you're going to get the insights and perspectives that you're looking for. There are no limits, so if you have a question or your own opinion, we want to hear it. We'll debate key topics and give you, the viewer, an inside scoop, analysis, and discussion that matters most. She is fighting for us all day long. I'm glad to see this happening. And if you're looking for the latest and greatest, we'll be diving deep into everything you love to play, watch, and listen to. We'll see you every day on Ben. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up? It's the one and only hip hop gamer, Hot 97, Logitech G, NBA 2K League, T Pain, Nappy Boy Gaming. It's a lot of energy in the room right now. It's a lot of energy in the room right now. See, when you do an introduction of someone of this stature, you gotta do it right. So, esports, hip hop, real gaming, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? One of the most powerful voices that we got in our industry now she goes from cheddar to vin baby video game entertainment network news network at that 24 7 is going down coming august 5th the one the only legendary Aaron ashley simon hey i feel like i gotta do like a walkout to that that was a really good <laughs> intro i loved it <laughs> yo that's how you gotta do it man so first off everybody um out there like if if y'all don't know who this is you gonna learn today like my man kevin hart said you gonna learn today so Aaron, let's let's start right from the beginning man um yeah, let them course. know let them know who you are and how your passion developed you know for esports gaming hip-hop and just the culture period yeah, of course. So, hi everyone. Uh, like he said, uh, I'm Aaron Ashley Simon, and oh my gosh! So, <laughs> my passion for all of the above started when I was younger. Uh, I've played video games pretty much all my life. Uh, the first video game and console that actually drew my passion was Sega Genesis and Sonic the Hedgehog. Because, of course, being a young kid, if you see uh, a hedgehog character running around, you see all the lights and also the sound. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? And I fell in love with it instantly and you know since then my parents have really helped me to cultivate that passion and of course over time i've, I've developed that passion for also music and uh, hip-hop and culture and uh sports and finding you know i was always what my mom liked to call was a renaissance woman i was someone who just had so many different passions and wanted to find ways to bring it all together and so you know when i first started out working in, in media I was 16, 17 years old, and I covered traditional sports and basketball. And I worked my way through um, college, and I was a D1 athlete at the University of Kentucky and still doing media work. And eventually, I, I went over to the Wall Street Journal, and I started in the traditional route. And But the thing with that was I always felt like I'm not traditional. Like, I always felt like I was very unconventional at the intersection of multiple things, and I felt like and during my career in the beginning, it was just like, no, you have to be one way. And I'm like, but why? Why do I have to be one way? And so I went from there to working the music media. I worked at Diddy's Television Network, uh, Revolt TV. And, and then eventually I kept going, going. And how I even got to this point, funny enough, I it, it was even I, I didn't even get here by like plan. Right. It just was a coincidence and it happened. Uh, my friend Kyle Harvey, him and I worked in the same company before, and him and I had so many great conversations. Like we had conversations talking about just the generational impact that uh, games like Grand Theft Auto and Tony Hawk and other games like uh, you know that had amazing music soundtracks, even like Jet Set Radio, Streets of Rage 2, and how that those music scores and soundtracks impacted kids. And it was a time period where. We didn't have Spotify discovery, right? We discovered music via our friends, underground, communities, music blogs, or even like uh, uh, through radio. But video games was that vehicle that integrated and implemented culture into the households of so many different kids and introduces so many people, different people. So him and I would get into like conversations and debates and stuff like that. And 
he was just like, yo, why would you, why would you cover this? Why would you write about it? So I was like, oh yeah, sure. So I started writing about it, got to the point where, you know, I started to build up my credibility and I was able to then cover the NBA 2K league when they first started develop relationships there. And, um, and then from there, they were like, uh, uh, they were, they wanted to do a Twitch show. And my friend Jeff Eisenban hit me up and was like, Hey, they're looking for another host. Would you want to do it? My entire career, I worked behind the scenes. So I was like, yeah, sure. And from there, that's when it transpired and, and it went into me doing work for Cheddar Esports. And then it just all, it just all rolled from there. And then now I have a career in this space, even though I, I didn't even plan to have a career in this space. It was just something that I was passionate about. And over time, I, I naturally found a way to bring all my passions together in one space. And I know, I know hip hop gamer, you, you did the same thing. It was just something that's true to you that you found a way to bring it all together. And sometimes though, when you do that, not everyone understands or they get on board instantly. It takes time. Uh, but over time, I've been able to really take those passions that I have and find ways to have overall discussions about esports and gaming and the growth of the business, as well as growth of just overall culture conversations. And uh, now I'm here doing interview with you, and it's been a wonderful ride. Yo, that's fire. Yo, yo, E. All right, so I got to hit you with this question real quick, right? Yeah. So, um, so, you know, DMX and Snoop Dogg just had their verses. Right. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so, so what I want, what I wanted to ask you is, cause, uh, like I just enjoyed it. To me, I feel like hip hop just won that night. Like you know what I'm saying. Like to me personally, yeah. I think it was a great uh battle. Now, what I want to ask you is, when it comes to video games, uh, <laughs> what if there was two systems or two games that oh. you could do a versus with? What game would it be? And which game would you represent in his favor to like battle against somebody with in oh. terms of their game that they would represent in like a versus battle? <laughs> Let's oh go. Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> that's a really good question. So I, you know what? I want to, I want to kind of switch it up a little bit. I would want to have a versus, but focusing on one console, and I want to have a battle where it's someone who is for it and someone who's against it. And I want it to be a battle of how impactful and ahead of its time Sega Dreamcast was. Ooh. And I want to have that versus battle discussing not only from a gaming perspective, but also the cultural impact of Dreamcast as well. Because even it's funny because I was just talking to my friend Danny Pena and there's, uh, there's some... Some of uh, similar functions that we're seeing that Sega actually brought to the fold earlier, we're actually seeing some of that being implemented even within the likes of like the subscription model we're seeing now, having access to like 50 games with Xbox Game Pass and stuff like that. So it's really interesting just to see how there are certain components, not only from a console standpoint, but just overall services that Sega was doing before everyone else was doing. And so I want to have that kind of like big debate conversation culture impact about sega and more specifically the dreamcast yo that's very interesting <clears throat> it's very interesting that you said that because the piggyback on that there was a service a while ago called on live and on live it, it was like the it was like the first iteration of what a netflix gaming service would be like where you just pick a game and play it and stuff like that yeah. so on top of what you said with dreamcast which is absolutely true and looking at on live from the streaming standpoint and stuff like that those is two i like two things uh two moments in time where they was way ahead of their time and and i think dreamcast get a lot more love because i mean still to this day had <clears throat> had one of the best launches ever in mm -hmm. a in a video game uh system but i love dreamcast still to this day even the vmu the video memory unit and i used to look at the, my uh nfl 2k plays in the joint yo what? Yeah, that's what? Like <laughs> that joint was crazy so i right, so now we, we got to talk that talk right now we got to talk that talk yo <laughs> when when you when you made the announcement that you was yeah. coming to vin i was like yo like because one thing about me personally i mean i know you know this but I get excited over everything, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> I really get excited to see like everybody that I know making these important moves because now more people on the outside looking in get to see that this is real, this can happen, it's inspirational. 
You understand what I'm saying? So my question to you is, you know, how did all, how did everything come about with you joining the Venn team? How has that experience been like so far? You got the launch coming August 5th, but also how is this inspirational to a lot of the uh, people that you talk to, especially the young girls that look up to you? Yeah, so my experience has been great. It's It's been a really fast one. You know, literally there was a period uh, earlier this year where, of course, you know, I for those who know, I worked at Twitter Esports and it fell apart. Uh, and then I just we just started having conversations with people at Venn. And it was it was kind of like an eye opening experience, too, because for for the previous work that I did, I didn't realize how impactful our program and just what, you know, even I brought to the table and what our team brought to the table, because sometimes you don't see the impact because there's sometimes there's people who admire from afar, but they're quiet about it. They just watch you. Right. And honestly, you know, once I moved away from the previous work, that's when it all, when I saw the impact and I saw the value of the, you know, what I brought to the table. And it was really cool because, you know, even from the start, everything from the chemistry test to us doing rehearsals for the download to even just like uh, social content, uh, talent, communicating with each other. That's the one thing I really love is that all of us on the on the talent team, we all communicate, we all are vibing with each other, we talk with each other, we support one another. And that's awesome because, you know, I feel like especially when it comes to media and especially when it comes to younger individual, there's always this, and, and more specifically when it comes to women, there's always this, oh, you guys have like this societal viewpoint where it's like, oh, if, you, if there's another woman, that's competition, right? If it's another person of color, that's competition because there's limited seats. I've never believed in that. I think that we can always embrace each other, support one another. And I love that that's, that support is at the core of us as not only a network, not only as a show, but every single one of us. And it's been a really great experience. And I also think that this is also another experience where I really feel like I'm somewhere that my input and my voice really matters. And it was very much like that at Cheddar with my team, but I didn't feel that when it came to the higher ups. At then, I feel it from top to bottom, from talent to social media team to uh, the, you know to Ariel and Ben, like all of them. I it's amazing to see that there's so many people on our team that come from so many different areas, so many different backgrounds, and then on top of that, everyone cares about each other's input uh and also uh you know they really are allowing us as talent to really shape the content and shape the show especially when it comes to the download so if there's a specific topic that we're very passionate about you know i love to talk about culture i love to talk about hip-hop and music and business and also i like to talk about social issues right and the great thing is like during our meetings you know if i bring it up and i'm like hey i really really want to talk about this i think this is important they're like, you know what? You're passionate about it. Well, let's do it. And I think that's awesome because, you know, when it comes to our show, The Download, it's about giving the news that gamers want. And the thing is, we are shaping what a gamer looks like. And it because gamers are universal, right? I feel like, especially when, we, when it comes to mainstream people that look at what we're doing at them, look at what you're doing, looking at what everyone, there's still this narrow mindset viewpoint of what a gamer is. I really feel like with the download and also with then we all have different passions and love for different genres. You know, you have uh, my dear friend, Eva, you know, who's a, who's really into JRPGs. Then you have Matt who comes from Overwatch and is really into FPSs and I'm into FPSs, but then I'm also into more of what I like to say that the games that integrate culture more like hip hop. So I'm like the, the person who brings like discussions about, you know, Def Jam 5 for New York and Jet Set Radio and the impact of that music score and everything like that. Uh, and then, you know, we have Jimmy and Jimmy, he's a content creator and an actor and he brings that entertainment side at, in addition to being a gamer. And then Degon is awesome too because Degon does stuff with Riot and he's really, really good at Valorant. And so we all have our different passions and interests and we just bring it all together in, in such a diverse, not only talent team, but also a diverse conversation. And that's the important thing at the end of the day is having these diverse conversations that gamers care about because gamers love music. Gamers love lifestyle. They love fashion. They love, you know, they want to talk about culture and social matters. And I think that having a show like The Download and having like all the talent reflecting that is the best thing. And honestly, I, I, I've been loving it since day one. Yo, listen, yo, let me tell you something. Like you was born for this. 
And I'm going to tell you why you was born for this. Because, like, the way you break things down, every line, every word, every cadence in the way you speak, that energy never dials down. You know what I'm saying? That passion is always there. You know me. Like, I, I analyze everything. But also, when it comes to, like, hip-hop and everything, like, I'm a rapper's rapper. <laughs> so I listen and, and I feel it and I channel it. And that's why I was like, yo, I got to get Aaron on. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about this. I've seen everything. I, I, yeah. I really wanted to highlight you and highlight the movement overall because I feel like a lot of times some of the things that get um uh lost in the message is that yeah. a lot of times greed gets involved and then with greed you lose the bigger picture so when you talked about earlier about the whole like uh competition type of thing where it's like yeah the comp there's competition here and there but at the same time yeah. there's space for everyone to come and have fun and talk and eat and, and do everything together. We just got to lead that way. And I love the, that you're leading that message that way. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. So now I want to ask you a question that a lot of, that a lot of people would, uh, is very interesting or intrigued by and stuff. Okay. So in the, in the gaming industry overall, uh, a lot of people wasn't aware that like, uh, like 48 to 49% of gamers are all women. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they didn't, they wasn't aware that you, you got more teenage girls playing games than teenage boys and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of stats and uh, statistics that a lot of people wasn't even aware about. And then when they learn about them, they like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I didn't even understand that. So when you're talking, uh, even from the business side and everything, like, what's some of the hurdles you had to jump over based off lack of knowledge from people in a position of power. Like, like what's yeah. some of the things you had to do to break down the barrier to make people understand, not just from a standpoint of culture and having fun, but also a con also from a standpoint of power and business and actually executing to make, yeah. to make these things happen that we're seeing with you right now, especially over at Venn, because that's, that's groundbreaking right there. Yeah, I think that ultimately, you know, whether it's in the gaming and esports industry or outside, it, it, women are held, women and people of color are held to a different credibility qualification standard than others, right? And so that's something that is across the board. And so, uh, I mean, but the one thing is, as, as someone who is uh, Black and Latin and just a very multicultural individual, uh, I already, we're born understanding that we got to work 150 times harder than everyone else. And so it was never a matter of me. It was never a matter of like my drive, right? It was just about under this. So this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned. A lot of people, yes, it's important to work hard, right? But it's also important to work smart and smarter because you could work hard and run around in a circle and get nowhere. But if you work hard and also work smart, you can get more with the with with the with a set amount of uh, productivity and energy that you put into it, right? And so that's why, like for example, I'll, I'll I'll even break down just even how I analyze. Okay, what lane am I going to fill in this industry? So before I even got here, I was like, all right, I love everything pretty much, right? I love gaming. I love all this stuff. I'm not seeing. I mean, aside from you and a few others. I'm not really seeing people that are taking a hold of that intersection of culture and esports, right? It's always been culture and gaming, but not as much when it comes to culture and esports from like a major broadcast standpoint, right? So I decided, okay, I want to take that lane. Another thing too, I understand business. You know, what a lot of people don't know is I actually minored in business management. And then I, my parents also work in business too. So when it comes to things like majority ownership, minority ownership, contracts, all this stuff, I understand it. And so I saw that there is a lack of knowledge and information when it comes to these things in this industry. Like it's a young industry. There's a lot of young people. Uh, but with that, it's important to have that knowledge. So I always try to discuss also the business side and what that ultimately can mean. And then another thing too, there's not, when we look at the overall landscape of broadcasting and esports, from like major broadcasts, right? I'm not talking about the amateur scene or smaller content cr or content creators or even smaller content creators, right? But major esports broadcasts, there's not a lot of black women, you know? And and so I realized that's that's something that I can lean into, right? And it's always this kind of balance of, you know, okay, I don't want to feel like I'm the the token black woman, but 
uh, I understand that by doing this, I can help to open up and create a pathway for others to enter into this space and utilize the influence and the relationships that I have and the knowledge. And so when I started, obviously, you know, it took some time. I had to be a little, I had to be more like esports and business heavy. Then I started integrating culture and conversations and then started bringing that in. And then people became more receptive to it. And then there, and then I had to build that foundation of she knows what she's talking about with esports. She knows what she's talking about when it comes to the business side and even the culture side in gaming. So then it's like, all right, now I can start implementing hip hop and all these different things. And so it's, it's, it's definitely been a, it's been a challenge in the sense of building that credibility within the past like year and a half and two. And I feel like that is no question. Of course, with new viewers, they're going to, it's always going to be, you know, a new having to prove myself. But for the most part across the industry, you know, uh, there's a various people who, who know who I am. And that's also why I've really been speaking up when it comes to diversity and inclusion as well as creating more opportunities and comfortable entryways for women in this space because it is difficult right not a lot of people see when i'm you know when i'm doing broadcast not a lot of people see the the comments about my appearance because i have short hair the the comments about you know you know people are like oh she's ugly calling me the n-word like all these things and it's a challenge in that sense because i have to not only deal with the uh, anonymous uh, aspect of the internet but also understanding that that's part of what comes with being someone who's at the forefront, being someone who's who's a public figure in this space. And I understand that, you know, look, Serena Williams is one of the best athletes of all time and she still gets issues. So I, those have been the challenges. And, 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 and during that time, I've been really just working on myself, being grounded in myself and understanding what the bigger picture is. And the bigger picture is getting more diversity on the broadcast space, getting more rising and amazing talent in this space. Also having important conversations, not just about the new patch updates for Fortnite or anything, but having important conversations from a cultural standpoint and also a social issue standpoint. And, you know, and during quarantine, I've been very, I've been very vocal about all of that. And it's been great to see that support and, you know, and, and tying it back to, you know, the show with the download and just then they, uh, they embrace that about me. They're like, Aaron, we know your blood. <laughs> we know, we know you bring that New York city energy. Yeah. You know, we're all, we're all <laughs> for it. And we, and we know that you want to talk about social matters and diversity and just some important, really important topics aside from just talking about, you know, uh, uh, certain games that I have a passion for or anything like that, or even like, you know, talking about the, the rumors around silent Hill and how like that's exciting. <laughs> Cause Silent Hill Resident Evil helped pave the way for modern day survival horror video game series. So that, it, all of that together, it's I'm finally at a place where just by me being myself and, and utilizing my platform to speak up about important things, it, it's it's it, like right now when I think about it, 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 you know, it's just something that I do because it's me. But long term, it's like I'm really working to help to create uh, opportunities and pathways for other women and, and people of color in this space, whether it's, you know, whether it's from uh them being guests on on our show or uh whether it is just whether whether it is just you know um highlighting them on my platform speaking about just certain things that are important to the overall gaming community and also those who are a part of underserved communities within it and you know i'm always vocal about that and the second that i i uh, uh signed my contract to work for then i literally told them i was like listen if i can't be me and if I can't still be vocal on the things that are important to me, then I can't be here. And and the, they were like, no, we want you to be you. And that's why we want you. And so it was just very comforting. And, and it was amazing to, to have from top down, everyone yeah. being like, no, Erin, be you. Because throughout my entire career, I've had so many people that try to change me, tell me how to be, be more feminine, do this, do that. And this is one of the first times where from, like I said, top down, whole company, they're like, no, we want you to be you and we love you for you. And we see the amazing things that you're doing and we want to help bring it to the next level. And that, and, and, and so it's, it's awesome that, you know, to have even a company be like that and have a show like the download be like that and have an amazing team behind it, uh, really want to elevate my voice and not try to like shift it or change it. 
Uh, it's the first time I've ever had that in, in my career. And uh, I, I'm, I'm so happy about that. And, and hopefully it inspires other people to know that there are great people in this industry who want to help uplift the voices, especially uplift the voices that aren't always highlighted or pushed heavily. Wow. Yo, listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. Like uh, to Ariel and Ben, um, shout out to my man, uh, 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 Kelvin, um, as well. Because I, I know uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Twitch is, you know, a part of that, you know, whole uh, team and everything. Um, Vin, like personally, like just hearing you speak, Aaron, and just like the feeling that I get just listening to you, it's like you preaching right now. This joint is crazy. Vin, it seems like to me, you found your home. It yeah. really seems like you found your home. And if Vin can really make people feel like they're at home, then Vin rounds with win, Vin for the win. Let's go, yo! Congratulations, like seriously. Thank you. I got, I got one more question, and then uh, we'll wrap it up, and I'll let you go. But um, I, I love the insight that you was able to share with us, uh, you know, about Vin and your experience, and you know, just the whole transition, you know, New York, L.A., and all this other stuff. That right there is incredible. Uh, for the final question. Yes. You got PlayStation 5 coming out. You got Xbox Series X coming out. This is going to be a loaded question, so get ready. So yeah, you got PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X coming out, right? You got the download show August 5th. Everything is about the launch, right? Like, with all this stuff, uh, you know, going on, and, and you're doing this with, within a pandemic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing this within, like, a yeah. pandemic, all this stuff uh, uh, going on. At the end of the day, was it all worth it? Like, in terms of just your whole journey, your whole experience, like, what would you say to somebody? Like, the, all the pain, the, all the doubt, people trying to change you, everything like that. You got so much exciting stuff going on. One, was it all worth it? And two... What you what are you most looking forward to in terms of your goals with Vin and impacting the industry more? Well, one, yeah, it was very much worth it. I mean, listen, you sometimes when you're going through just the struggles and the obstacles, it's kind of like, you know, you, you question yourself, right? You question yourself. Sometimes there comes a little bit of doubt, but it's the passion that keeps pushing you through. And to see that all the work that I've done, and, and this is a crazy part, right? I've been working in the media for 11 years. I'm only 28. I've been working in the media for 11 years. And all that work and, and adjustments and, and, and switching and dealing with people who saying I'm not good enough in front of the camera or I don't fit their mold and still being like, no, I believe in myself. I'm going to do it. And to see everything kind of go when, when it started with NBA 2K League, then Cheddar Esports, then I got signed to CAA, then now it's at Venn. It's like, it was all worth it. And it just shows that you can achieve your goals and dreams. You know, it's never going to be a linear growth. Sometimes you got to take five steps back in order to go 10 steps forward. And you got to be patient. That's another thing too, is I think sometimes we get impatient because we're like, oh, we want things now, 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 you know? It wasn't, you know, now it's, it's, it's like my time, you know, a couple, couple years ago, maybe it wasn't, but it's my, it's my time right now. And, but the one thing I have to say is all those struggles have made me continue to stay humble. I've always been a humble person, but continue to stay humble. It's kept me grounded and understanding that the same way that these, these things can, uh, these successful and these positive things can come, they can also be taken away. So I've, I'm, I'm very humble and it's kept me in that way. And also it, it kept, and also another thing too that it, what it did was it made me appreciate the support that I've gotten from friends and so many people. Like, you know, shout out to my friend Amanda Stevens. Amanda Stevens is the person who introduced me to, to Brandon, who's one of the pro former producers there. And she really helped me through the door, you know, and and it just shows that there are such amazing, kind, passionate individuals. And uh, throughout my entire journey, I had so many people who helped to uplift me. And that also is something that I want to do for others and find ways to uplift others and try to help people and just show people that, 
you know, yeah, I may be successful, I may be growing, but at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be that kind, compassionate, and humble person and help others because I remember when it when I when it was like hard. I remember when I was struggling. You know, there's a point in time where I got laid off and I had hip surgery. I couldn't even go back to work. I was only making two thousand dollars a month. I didn't even have health insurance. Like it was just a mess. Like I even dealt with like anxiety and depression and all that stuff. And and but even through that, I had so many people who told me like, no, we support you. You can do it. And I and even though I believed in myself, it really helped me get to the point where I'm like, nah, I, I'm about to go off. Like I'm about to. This is gonna be my year, 2020, uh, 2019. No, no matter what, it's gonna. Those are gonna be my years and moving forward. And so, it was. It was all worth it. Honestly, you know, I. It's 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 so hard sometimes to say that because like when you're in it, you're just like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. But then later <laughs> on, you realize that all the obstacles and challenges and the setbacks that you get are all just lessons. Lessons that you have to learn in order to, uh, you, you to take the necessary steps to to go forward, and. I feel like, you know, then is that next step. It's it's that step of, okay, you got here, but now we, we're trying to get you up there. We're trying to get you all the way up there. Like, I'm not just trying to be, you know, someone who's impactful in esports and gaming. I'm trying to be one of the most impactful black women, black and Latin women in entertainment, period. period. And, so, and, and so then I know it's going to help me with that because we have such integration with entertainment and, and everything like that. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for it. And, and I think the really cool thing too is as, as part of the growth of Venn, they're really big on, it's not just about growing the network. It's also about growing you guys. Like we want to support you guys and help build you up because when you're successful, the show, the download's successful. When our talent overall is successful, Ben's is going to be extra successful. And so for them to be like, we want to help with whatever we can through the content, through social media, even through the show, we want you all to shine and get big because we want to support you. And so wow. just to have that message, like, honestly, like, I, I know I keep smiling, but like having that, it just makes me want to like, yo, I'm just, this I'm is just crazy, like, yo, I want to work I want to work so much harder now. Like I'm going to go from 150 to 2000 <laughs> now for the download as well as for Ben. And, and, and I'm super excited for that. And I really, I really hope that people can see, like I said, that they can do it, especially for, you know, minority women, black women, Latin women, LGBTQ plus women, uh, showing that you can do it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging, but uh, just know that, you know, no matter where I go, I'm going to do everything I can to help, provide people with the necessary knowledge, information, and support, whether on the download or on my own social media platforms. I'm going to always try and help people whenever I can. Yo, yo, ain't nothing else to say after that, man. This joint, yo, phenomenal <laughs> as always. Aaron, you killed it. And um, PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, you, like, what, what what we doing? Who, who you going ah. with? Who you going? You're not going to let you leave without that, son. Oh, my what, gosh. What, okay. What, what we doing? Well, <laughs> more, okay, so more than likely because most of my friends are on PlayStation. I'm going to get the PS5. But if I do not get the Xbox Series X, uh, I will get uh, Xbox Game Pass. I will get the services. services. Uh, and, but because, oh my gosh, wait, can I, can I quickly <laughs> yeah, 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 let's, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's so, go. <laughs> so the thing that I really love is that the typical console war that we're so used to, it's changing. Like, I know that people were a little bit upset about the recent uh, Xbox presentation and some of the previous one, but what people fail to realize is Xbox, yeah, they're selling their console, but that's not the main thing that they're selling. They're trying to sell an ecosystem. That's what they're trying to sell. They're trying to sell the fact that, yeah, if you would like to buy the console, you can, but we also have services. We also are implementing xCloud and building up xCloud so that you can literally play our games and play our services anywhere. It's not just about isolating the games and the services into one console, into one thing, or just a few. It's about expanding it. And 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 that's the one thing that I really like about what Microsoft is doing is, is they understand that gaming is a lifestyle and you have to implement the services and the games into the lifestyle of gamers, right? There's some of us that can't just sit at home and play on a console. So what do they want to do? 
oh, okay, we'll make it so that you can bring it with you uh, on your phone. If you want to play on the train, if you want to play in a car ride, we're going to make sure you have that. It's they're selling the ecosystem the same way that Apple developed that ecosystem where you feel like you need to buy all the products. And even if you don't have the products, there's you can have like a specific service. You can have one item that doesn't even like it, it, it will it will work by itself. But if you buy multiple th things from Apple, they all work together. together. That's what Microsoft is trying to do. And so I would say that even if I do get the PS5, I, I definitely want to get the additional services that the Microsoft and Xbox are putting together. Yo, that's dope. That's dope. So look, man, like, yo, Aaron, one of these days we got a battle and stuff like that. Uh, uh, whatever game, you know what I'm saying? It could be Street Fighter, Call of Duty, whatever. But I haven't had a chance to battle you, so I want to smoke you. And I see my boy Will Powers just, just jumped in, so that's probably the that's probably the cue that I got to let you go and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, look, one love and God bless, you know what I'm saying? Is there anybody or any uh, anybody you want to shout out or anything you want to plug in before we get out of here, Aaron? Well, of course, I have to shout out the download team as well as Ven for giving me this opportunity. It's tremendous. Uh, I want to shout out everyone, uh, my management and team, with CAA and, and to 10 who've been super helpful and really believed in me in that intersection of culture gaming. Uh, my friends from New York City, you got Amanda Stevens, you got Gabe, you got Nars, you got Judy, you got Zaid, you got Jimmy. Like the New York City esports and gaming scene, and, and you too, the New York City esports and gaming scene really brought me into the community and really took me into the family. And, and that is what really helped to s inspire me and support me to, to really push forward. So shout out to everyone. Also shout out to everyone who continues to support and follow me throughout my journey. And uh, I hope you guys are excited to check out the download. Yo, I can't wait. So look, on that note, it's the one and only hip-hop gamer, Nappy Boy Gaming, my boy T-Pain, Logitech G, on your hot 9-7 every day. That's my word. And we out of here, baby. Peace.